every now and again I'll check comments on YouTube and uh, sometimes it's quite interesting, you know. And one, I was just checking a comment on YouTube yesterday and it says that Patrick doesn't advocate deep breaths. And I was just thinking, is, is that really true? Like, how did the, the viewer, like, what made that person think that that was the case? Of course, I want to be looking at breathing from a number of different dimensions. But the question is, what is a deep breath? What is a deep breath? Now, my interpretation of a deep breath is that you're not breathing high, that you're breathing low. So when we think of the, the definition of the word deep, it means far from the top. And a good way to understand the word deep, of course, is go to a swimming pool. You know the shallow end and you know the deep end. So far from the top, it's deep. In terms of the human lungs, we're talking about deep, meaning that we are drawing the air into the lower regions of the lungs. So we are breathing low. And a good gauge of whether we are breathing low is that you do maybe the high-low test. And this is when you can be sitting. So say, for example, you're sitting and you have one hand on your chest and you have one hand just above your ab navel and as you breathe in that your tummy is gently moving out and as you breathe out your tummy is gently moving in but an even better way would be to have lateral expansion and contraction of the lower ribs now that's a deep breath and we're always advocating deep breathing because when you breathe through your nose, you have a much better recruitment of the diaphragm versus when you breathe through the mouth. So, for example, if I look down at my chest and I take the breath through the mouth, you'll see automatically mouth breathing tends to engage the upper chest. So mouth breathing is a shallow breath. And the other aspect of this is if we can improve breathing from a biochemical dimension, in other words, the primary driver to breathe is the gas carbon dioxide. So we breathe to get rid of excess CO2. We don't breathe to bring in oxygen. Okay, during the process of breathing, we do bring in oxygen, but the primary driver to breathe is not oxygen. The primary driver to breathe is carbon dioxide. Oxygen levels have to drop by about 50% or so before oxygen drives your breathing. So on the basis of that, if we're overly sensitive to the accumulation of the gas carbon dioxide, the drive to breathe is quite strong. And we often feel that we're not getting enough air. And when we feel that we're not getting enough air, it very often will drive our breathing to the upper chest because whenever we feel that we're uncomfortable or we're feeling say suffocated or having air hunger, which is a real primal fear. The fear of suffocation is, is a very, very primal fear. And it, it's telling the body that there's something that is not quite right. And in this instance, breathing is such an important function because the importance of a function is determined by how soon does the organism perish when you switch it off? And with breathing, of course, we can just last for a few minutes. Now, in comparison to food, we can last for weeks. Water, we can last for days. So breathing, it just, you know, how many more times important is it than food and water? So coming back to what might be causing shallow breathing, that can be an increased drive to breathe because we're feeling air hunger and in an effort to alleviate the sensation of suffocation, we breathe faster, we breathe upper chest, okay. For 22 years, my work has focused very much on the biochemical dimension of breathing. We do, of course, look at the biomechanical dimension and the psychophysiological dimension, but a special emphasis on the biochemical dimension of breathing. Now, if we can address breathing from a biochemical dimension, we are able to influence and slow down the respiratory rate to normalize tidal volume, normalize minute volume, remove that uncomfortable feeling that people feel when their breathing is under par. And also, by improving breathing from a biochemical dimension, we remove one of the factors that can be causing breathing to the upper chest in the first place. So am I a fan of deep breathing? Absolutely. We teach it all the time. But what is your interpretation of a deep breath? In a deep breath, it doesn't mean a big breath.